Hey, shalom, shalom, mishpokha. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shomer, and today I'm going to be covering the verse in Proverbs 22.6 that says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I want to uh, blow away a myth, a, a false doctrine that has been taught in uh, the majority of Christianity and Messianic Judaism that says that this verse is a promise from God that if you train up a child in your religious ways, that when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is absolutely not true. And people are making God out to be a liar when they apply that meaning to this verse. Because I'm sure that we can uh, go out into the world and, and uh, talk about family and friends who have children who they've raised correctly in the faith and they've departed and they're still departed they haven't come back and some of them have even died in their sin so where is that promise where where is God you know connected to that promise he's not because it's a false teaching um, am I saying that that can't happen no it's absolutely possible train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it it could mean in a spiritual sense in some cases and in some instances that when you do raise and train a child up in the faith that if they become a prodigal son or daughter that they will come back but it is not a promise why is it not a promise for the simple fact that God gave us free will and if he made this promise and made a son or daughter come back when they didn't want to he would go against man's free will and it you know I mean it 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 wouldn't match up with with the character of God or God's promises um, so what is this verse saying? What does this verse mean? Well, like I said, there are some instances where uh, a prodigal son or daughter does leave the faith, and because they've been raised right, they remember all the teachings, and they remember all, you know, the right thing to do, and what the right thing is, and when they find themselves in a desperate situation, at rock bottom, like the prodigal son in the scriptures, they return to the Father. This could happen, but as I said before, this is not a promise. It is not a divine promise that this is always going to happen this way. Don't worry if you have a prodigal son or daughter, just, just you know, they're, they're going to come back on their own because you raised them right. No, you're, you're messing with their eternal salvation and their eternal soul. Don't count on that. So what does this verse mean? If you look at the context of the verse and look into the Hebrew, what it means is that if you train up your child in the way he should go in life, not just morally, but it's specifically talking about occupationally, that you equip your son or daughter to live in the real world, to be a productive member of society. Perhaps you teach them a skill, perhaps you teach them a trade, something that they can fall back on. If they go and pursue something on their own and it doesn't work out, they will have that uh, occupation or that skill to fall back on, and they will not depart from that. In other words, it, it, is, a, it is a passage talking about um, training up a child to make a living. It does elude on a spiritual uh, remez sowed level that if you train them morally right, that their conscience will, will get to them and will tug them back. Doesn't mean that they will always come back because they have free will. But um, you know, when somebody has to survive out in the real world, if you train a child and equip them how to balance their budget, how to uh, bank, how to write checks, how to apply for a job, um, how to um, get along uh, with other people in the real world, how to have a good work ethic, uh, a skill or a trade, and you instill these things in, in morality, right and wrong, you instill these things in your child when they get older, they will not depart from it because that will be their compass, that will be their guide for success in life. It will help them get jobs. It will help them um, you know, in their education. And if they pursue a path that differs from what you taught them occupationally and it doesn't work out, they will always have what you taught them, what you instilled in them to fall back on. Sadly today, there are many, um, because of our culture is different from the Hebraic culture of the first century, sad to say that um, you know, most of us do not raise our son or daughter in a trade. Most of us don't have a trade ourselves. We, we don't even follow in the footsteps of our own parents. We got an education and got our own job or what have you. But, um, you know, if, if, we can, if we can instill them in them a skill or a trade that they can fall back on, we're going to set them up for success in life, to be productive members of society. So I just wanted to um, 
relay to you what the Hebrew says regarding this verse and what the true meaning of this verse is so people out there won't get this false impression that God promises that if their son or daughter goes prodigal on them, that they will come back. It's a promise from God. It says so in here in the word, and God is a God that cannot lie, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's true. God's a God that cannot lie, but he never promised that if your son or daughter goes prodigal that they're going to come back just because you raised them right. It just don't happen. Just look at the real world. Praise God when it does happen because it can, because God's merciful. But will it always happen? No, because every son or daughter has a free will of their own. They can choose which path they go. So they can either accept or reject God. They can either you know, um, accept him or deny him, choose to follow him or not. And there's nothing that anyone can do about that. We can pray and pray that the Holy Spirit influences them, but ultimately it is their decision. So don't make this verse banking on that your prodigal son or daughter will return if you just cling to that verse. Um, again, this is another unpopular message, but I have to correct doctrinal error here because we have to go what, by what the scripture says, by what the word of God says, by what it means hebraically and linguistically and, and historically and contextually so we will know that it's right. Um, because when we uh, apply something in God's word to something that God never said or promised and it doesn't happen, we get angry and bitter at God and say, it's your fault, you promised, you lied to me, you know. I, I don't believe in you anymore because you didn't, you didn't keep true to your word, God. When stuff like that happens and you have that tendency to blame God, I can guarantee you 100% of the time it's never God's fault. It's always our fault. It's always man's fault. And in this case and in instant, it's our fault not dividing the word of truth correctly, not correctly interpreting and, and, and exege exegetically looking at the scripture. But anyway, I just wanted to relay this to you, so hopefully, um, I, I, again, I don't want to use this video to make somebody lose hope if their son or daughter is out there. Pray, because the fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. So pray, 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 witness when the Holy Spirit gives you opportunity, but ultimately, it's that uh, son or daughter's decision where they're going to return or not. But you've got to pray that the Holy Spirit will prepare their heart, make their heart ready, that conditions in their life will bring them, that will set the stage and bring them to the point to where they need to make that decision to where they repent. And if that means they have to hit rock bottom to look up, whatever means necessary to bring them back to salvation, to bring them back to Torah, to bring them back to, to, to Adonai, to Yeshua, pray that it be so. May it be done. But don't hedge your bets on that verse and think that's what it means because it don't. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Shalom and Shavuotov.